You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group Coaching Class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Thursday, August 9, 2018. This is your Options News Rundown. I am Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from Investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Thursday. The first thing to know is U.S. and Japan hold their first bilateral trade talks. While markets are still on edge over the brewing trade war between the United States and China, Traders expect today's main event to take place in Washington, where Japan will enter talks, seeking to avert steep tariffs on its car exports and fend off U.S. demands for a bilateral free trade agreement. U.S. President Donald Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe agreed in April to set up a new framework to discuss free, fair, and reciprocal trade that will be led by U.S. Trade Representative Robert Leitzer and Japanese Economy Minister Tashimitsu Motegi. A Japanese trade surplus with the U.S. may be a potential target for Trump's trade policies. Trade war fears have been simmering for months, but markets, but uh, keeping markets gains in check, with investors jittery over the prospect of further escalation in tensions between the U.S. and its major trading partners having an impact on global economic growth. Second thing to know today is sanctions rock currency markets. Sharp movements in currency markets were in focus as investors reacted to fresh U.S. sanctions on Russia for its role in the poisoning of a former security agent in the U.K., as well as ongoing U.S.-Turkey human rights dispute. The Russian ruble retreated to its lowest level since November 2016, weakening beyond the psychologically important 65 per dollar threshold after Washington said it would impose fresh sanctions on Moscow over the Kremlin's alleged involvement in the poisoning of Russian spy Sergei Skripal with the chemical agent Novichok earlier this year in the rural English town of Salisbury. Uh, the third thing to know today is U.S. stock futures point to a flat open. U.S. stock futures point to a muted open as investors focused on the latest batch of corporate earnings while continuing to monitor global trade and geopolitical tensions. Fourth thing to know today is media earnings are in focus. Dozens of companies are expected to release earnings today in, the, in one of the last big waves of the earnings season. Most of the focus will fall on Viacom, the parent company of MTV, Nickelodeon, and Paramount, which reports ahead of the opening bell. Analysts on Wall Street expect earnings per share of $1.07 on revenue of $3.27 billion. And the fifth thing to know today is PPI data is ahead. Today's calendar will bring investors the July data on producer prices at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The data is expected to show prices rose 3.4% over the prior year, 
as signs of inflation press pressures building in the economy continue to add up. Also on the calendar are initial jobless claims at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Economists expect just a slight rise in weekly first-time claims from the week before. Our second story today is from CNBC.com. Rite Aid and Albertsons agreed to terminate their merger agreement. Rite Aid Corporation and Al Albertsons companies announced on Wednesday they are terminating their merger agreement the evening ahead of a shareholder vote over the deal. The announcement is a blow to the pharmacy and the grocer, which are both facing mightier competitors in their respective industries, but were unable to structure a deal that sufficiently appealed to investors. The $24 billion deal announced in February has faced pushback from a number of retail investors, as well as top 10 shareholder Highfields Capital Management. Critics have argued the deal provides Albertson's private equity owner, Cerberus Capital Management, a vehicle to take the company public without rewarding Rite Aid shareholders in return. Aiding to mounting challenges, influential investor advisory, firm, uh, advisory firms, Glass Lewis and Institutional Shareholder Services in July urged investors to vote against the tie -in. Our third story today is from MarketWatch.com. U.S. company sales growth is accelerating. Here are the biggest winners. As we near the end of earnings season, two trends are clear. Profits have gone through the roof, helped by lower corporate income taxes, but sales have also increased remarkably, and that trend started before the tax cuts went into effect. About 18% of the S&P 500 companies have fiscal quarter end dates that don't match the end dates of calendar quarters. Also, through August 7th, about 95% of S&P 500 companies had reported results for fiscal quarters ended April 27th or later. But that's close enough for us to show a set of remarkable numbers. According to the most recently held available quarterly data through August 7th, 267 S&P 500 companies increased their sales per share by 10% or more from a year earlier. Our final story today is from Investing.com. U.S. producer prices stagnant in July. U.S. producer prices were unchanged in July according to data released on Thursday. The Labor Department said its producer price index showed no change last month in the 12 months through July, PPI rose 3.3%. Economists had forecast PPI rising 0.2% last month and increasing 3.4% from a year ago. The so-called core PPI increased by 0.1% from a month earlier and rose 2.7% in the 12 months through July. Analysts had predicted core PPI to increase 0.2% month on month and 2.8% on an annualized basis. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, August 9th, 2018, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli, Trade Smart, and have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. 
For more Quality Options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 